Tensions are rising between the colonists and the British. Colonists are demanding that Britain respect their rights as English citizens. Here is a song the Daughters of Liberty sang to mark this tense time period. improves for a short time as Parliament is forced once again to give in to the colonists and British merchants. The boycotts have proved to be a powerful form of protest used by the colonists. British merchants suffered greatly and once again begged Parliament to help them out. Parliament repeals the Townsend Acts except for the tax on tea. Colonists start to feel that like they've won because of these repeals and the King and Parliament try to avoid further conflict. However, they still continue the committee the colonists still continue the committees of correspondence. They use this communication system to exchange information on British actions. Once again, we see the colonists starting to unite together. Okay, your blanks appear. Parliament repeals the Townsend Acts, except the tax on tea. Very, very important there. And then here, oops, sorry. Down here, this should be the committees of correspondence. Committees of Correspondence. And remember that was like a um, communication system. Very important as well. The British played this song to the colonists in hopes of encouraging them to buy English tea. Would you care to sit with me For a cup of English tea Very twee, very me Any sun now, tea is still being taxed under the Townsend Acts. I know what you all are thinking. Wait a minute. I thought, <laughs> I thought the Townsend Acts were repealed. And you're right. However, the tea tax was not repealed with everything else. So back to the story. The colonists are continuing their boycott of tea and smuggling it in from other countries. They are also using other sources from which to create tea, like raspberry leaves. Mmm, yummy. The East India Tea Company is near bankruptcy because of the boycotts. The company begins to beg Parliament to help them out, and Parliament is more than willing. In fact, they believe they have a brilliant plan that will make everyone, including the colonists, happy. Ha! They couldn't have been more wrong. The Tea Act was the name given by Parliament to this beautiful idea. They would sell the tea from the East India Tea Company directly to the colonists instead of through merchants and at lower prices. Okay, here, this should be raspberry leaves. And then that's it. Notice what we've got bolded here. East India Tea Company is near bankruptcy because of those boycotts, one of the most effective forms of protest used by the colonists. I think it's important to note here, too, that the Tea Act did not tax tea. It was the Townsend Act that placed a tax on tea. The Tea Act just said you can only buy tea from the East India Tea Company and we're going to sell it directly to you at lower prices. Very good. I think that's an excellent point to make. Boy, the King and Parliament couldn't have been more wrong about the colonies and the Tea Act. The colonists hated the Tea Act. By selling the tea directly to the colonists and bypassing the merchants, the British were actually creating a monopoly on tea for the East India Tea Company. This would put colonial merchants who sold tea out of business. In today's economy, companies are not allowed to form a monopoly. In other words, when you go to the store, you always have different brands from which to choose. 
tea, for instance. When you go to the grocery store, you don't have only East India tea. You have Lipton, Louisiana, all different brands. So if we were living back then under the Tea Act, we wouldn't be able to buy Louisiana or Lipton. Another argument that you should be familiar with is that colonists were still upset that they were paying a tax on tea. No, no taxation, taxation without, without representation. representation. It didn't matter the price of tea being cheaper. It was the principle of the right of their rights still being violated. The colonists continued their boycotts on tea and tried one more peaceful action. The colonists demanded that the ships carrying tea leave Boston Harbor. They didn't even want the tea to be unloaded on colonial land. However, this petition to the government was denied. The Sons of Liberty decided it was time to take action. In a secret meeting, they devised their plan for the Boston Tea Party. They would disguise themselves as Indians and board the ships at night to keep from being discovered. They would then destroy all the tea by throwing it in the Boston Harbor. On December 16, 1773, the colonists carried out their plan. Here was the song they played to help them get into character. In the end, over one, I mean, I'm sorry, over 10,000 pounds and that's dollar, like dollars, 10,000 pounds worth of tea was destroyed. Boston Harbor will be a teapot tonight. I'm an Indian outlaw, half Cherokee and Choctaw. My baby, she's a Chippewa, she's a one of a kind. Is my papa. He gets his orders from my mama. She makes him walk the line. All right, your blanks. Um, strength and boycott goes right there. And then petition to the governor fails. Petition to governor fails. Notice again what we've got bolded here. The colonists are angry about the East India Tea Company's monopoly. And they were taxed without representation under the Townsend Act. And again, we are talking about the Boston Tea Party here. The British didn't take, did not take the Boston Tea Party lightly. They had had enough. The king really felt disrespected by what the colonists did. How dare they disobey him in such a demonstrative way? Such a good word. The king and parliament decided it was time to punish the colonists in Boston. The king decides to be extremely harsh because he hopes the other colonies will be scared and not follow Boston's rebellious footsteps. The course of acts, as the British called them, closed Boston's harbor until the tea was paid for. All self-government was done away with. Instead, martial law was established. This meant that soldiers would be in charge of the town. They would institute curfews for the town and overall make living in the town very difficult. That's called martial law again. I just want to say that one more time because that's difficult for y'all. It's right here. This is how you spell martial law, when the military is in charge. British officials who broke the law were tried in England where they received little to no punishment. To accommodate more soldiers, they passed Yet another quartering act. All right, your blanks. The first one up here, the coercive acts um, means coercive means forceful. Encouraged Parliament to be harsh with Massachusetts. Massachusetts, right here. Boston's port is closed to all trading until the tea is paid for. Remember, that's ten thousand pounds worth of tea. Martial law means the military is in charge. Down at the bottom, allowed easier trials for, uh, oh, allowed easier trials and punishment. And then the, the bottom one is another quartering act. Okay, believe it or not, this is already your last slide on this one. In the colonies, they referred to these laws as intolerable, meaning they couldn't stand them. They couldn't tolerate them. In response, the colonists held the first meeting of the Continental Congress. This involved delegates from every colony except Georgia. Why not Georgia, you ask? Well, they were most loyal to Britain. 
They really had close ties to the mainland and had no interest in participating in anything that could harm that bond. In this meeting, we once again see some of our most famous founding fathers. George Washington, Patrick Henry, Sam and John Adams. They were cousins and many, many more. This meeting marked yet another first where we see the colonies uniting and working together. In this meeting, the delegates declared their support for Massachusetts. Pretty huge, remember? The king thought that for sure nobody would support Massachusetts. They pointed out that the intolerable acts violated their rights as English citizens. This unification against British Britain was exactly what the king and parliament had hoped they had avoided through the issuance of the coercive acts. The delegates also agreed to continue boycotts, but took it a step further. Now the colonies would stop exporting raw materials that British merchants relied so heavily on. This would, in essence, destroy many British merchants. The Declaration of Rights was also sent to the King and Parliament, stating the rights of the colonists that the colonists felt that they possessed as English citizens. All they were asking for was respect, which is why this song became their theme song. I'm going to play it at the end. Okay. After much debate, the colonists agreed these peaceful methods were the best way to go. Some had wanted to fight right away, feeling it was the only way to get their voice heard. As a compromise, the congressmen decided to encourage each colony to pre prepare a militia and begin storing up weapons. Also, the delegates agreed to meet again in May if the king and parliament didn't make any changes. Most delegates are still thinking of only fighting for their rights. However, the seed of independ for independence is beginning to take shape in some of the delegates' minds. Let's go over your blanks real quick and then I'll play, or the only blank. <laughs> okay, right here, this should be uh, that they, they should prepare a colonial militia. A militia is like an army that's ready to go. It's made up of townspeople, that type of thing. Okay, and here is their theme song. And we'll let that lead y'all out. <laughs> 